Hey YouTube community, haven't talked to you in a while about RV living, but here I am visiting the old lifestyle. Just made some asparagus with onions and garlic, some red beans and rice with hamburger, and I'm enjoying this little RV, uh, little space a little tight, but it's, it's all good. Um, I oh, am here visiting my daughter who is ready to go on her missionary's trip in Uganda for two years. So I'm in Florida spending some time here with her for her last two weeks. And I've been out of my RV now for a while, but it's nice to be back in a simple little RV. Um, this backyard here and just enjoying having a little space to my own. I did this through Airbnb. I'm not gonna tell you where yet. Maybe uh, afterwards I will, but I don't want anyone to know where I am, basically, but I'm in Florida, that's all I can say. And uh, I'm really excited about this journey. It's been a crazy journey. I um, had planned this trip before, a couple of weeks before, well, since January, I think. Anyways, um, in the midst of planning, um, I had to worry about my job and wonder if they were going to give me a hard time about taking time off. But I thought, you know what? It's my daughter's future and I'm not going to see her for a long time. Unless God grants me the miracle of getting to Uganda in the next two years because she's not coming home. So, I'm going to... Make sure I spend time with her. So, little did I know that God had other plans too before I left North Carolina. Unfortunately, I had a sad situation. I had a death in the family. And it was my brother, sadly, who was an addict. And addiction stole his life. And so instead of just coming to Florida, I had to leave a few days early, adding more concern to my for my boss, but you gotta do what you gotta do for family. And uh, so I left a few days early and uh, drove up to Connecticut from North Carolina, did the services, which God moved mightily in, and I'm thankful that First of all, he gave me a $274 tip from a customer right before I left because I really didn't know how I was going to get there. And that was the first miracle. Then we had to deal with getting his body released so we can get an obituary in, which meant that we had to get his daughters involved, who he's been estranged, estranged with for a long time, but we were able to get that all worked out and by some miracle I just happened to have a social security number of his through a W-2 form that um, I had held on to for years that he left at my house like many years ago like 12 13 years ago or more than that so anyways we got it done we got the service done the service was beautiful many other there's other addicts there it's a small town in the pasture. Hopefully now we'll be able to minister to them and my other brother who is still struggling with addiction too. So then I had to move on and come to Florida to say goodbye to my daughter. And it's been great so far. Um, enjoying this little RV and thinking about the RV life again. Maybe thinking about getting a drivable one. We had a drivable one in the past, but it wasn't very drivable because it was so old that we were afraid to drive it anywhere. So we ended up with a fifth wheel and then we lived in that for a while. Then we bought some land, which we haven't developed yet. And we're still working on all that. But I know that God um, has led me here and has led me through all of this. And another thing about being here, right before I came here, he started to connect me with my old church. Um, the pastor that married my husband and I, who by the way, are separated right now. And I don't usually listen to sermons that often. I check I check 
their website once in a while, but I listened to one and I was totally in awe of what he's preaching right now. And he's preaching about repentance, but in a different way that I've ever heard. So that's Grace and Faith Church in Tampa. And I am totally just believing 